to answer that question that I think you're mostly going to be able to get correct. Fantastic, we are live on YouTube, which means I can go back to my screen. And then I can resume sharing. Look at that, we've had 10 votes come through for the warm up. We've still got over five minutes until we're going to get started. So lots of time to think very carefully about this. Kieran, you had a PSAG lesson in the morning. Very cool. What did you learn in your lesson, Kieran? Sashita, I am glad that you are ready. It's really important that we feel ready for learning. And actually a really important part of basically any activity in life is that preparation, making sure that you're not only physically ready with everything you need, but you're mentally prepared as well. And so I'm glad that you are feeling ready. Yusuf, I see you can't see the question. The screen isn't showing. Okay, let me reload. The PowerPoint, can anybody see it now? Let me know if you can see the presentation. Fantastic, I am glad to hear it. So I have left this poll up for a little while. I'm gonna leave it for a little bit longer because we've still got five minutes before we're going to get started. We do have a second question, but I don't want us to spend too much time on any single question. Let's see if we can get up to 50 votes in this first question. We don't even have 50 people in the call yet, so we might have to wait a moment. So let's see, Alicia, you asked if I could use orange today. So I'm gonna set that up now so I don't forget. The first color, color I shall use will be orange. There we go. Nicole, you learned about Victorian London this morning. Do you have any interesting facts about Victorian London that I could pass on to everybody else? I'm gonna stop that poll there and share the results because you are all very confident with that one. Absolutely got the correct answer, which is that assignment is not spelled correctly. Can anybody type the correct spelling into the chat box? Can you show me how you would spell assignment if not like this? Kieran, well done. First one to get it in. Very good job. So assignment is spelled A-S-S-I-G-N-M-E-N-T. It has that silent G in it. And next week, I will be running a lesson on silent letters. I think that will be part of my Lower Key Stage 2 English Club, which will happen on Tuesday afternoon at half past four, I believe. So Nicole has passed on a fact, and I'm going to read it out to everyone because this seems very interesting. Nicole has said, while the city grew wealthy as Britain's holdings expanded, 19th century London was also a city of poverty where millions lived in overcrowded and unsanitary slums. Life for the poor was immortalised by Charles Dickens in such novels as Oliver Twist. A very interesting fact with lots of very interesting vocabulary. Possibly some words in there that might need some clarification, so I'll just go through them and pick a few out. Expanded means to get bigger, so as London got bigger. Uh, it said 19th century London was a city of poverty. Poverty is when people are very poor. Oftentimes poverty will mean people don't have enough money to eat, don't have enough money for, for shelter. It says uh, millions lived in overcrowded and unsanitary slums. So overcrowded, too many people. Unsanitary means very unclean. And slums are generally areas of quite poor building, uh, places that tend to spring up quite quickly. And then we can see in the last sentence, life for the poor was immortalised. Immortalised means to live forever. And Charles Dickens, an author, did this by writing about it, writing some really interesting stories about the Victorian era, such as A Christmas Carol and Oliver Twist. 
Okay, we have two minutes until we're going to get started. So let's bring up the next question and let's relaunch the poll for that one. Slightly harder question, but you guys are all pretty confident. Look at that, votes are coming in much faster now. Let me check how many people we have in the lesson now. 84 participants now, love that. And I'm sure we're gonna see a few more coming in over the next minute. And I'm so impressed by how many of you so confidently can spell assignment. Few of you just need to be careful using a double S rather than a single S and making sure that there's only one E in the meant part of assignment, but otherwise, Really good job, you've done well. In fact, I've seen the word so many times now, it's starting to look wrong. There's a, uh, a word for that, it's called somatic reduplication. If you were to say a word over and over and over, like the word cardigan, if you keep saying cardigan over and over, eventually your brain starts to almost forget what it means. It's a very interesting way that the brain works there. Okay, we're gonna stop the poll. Stop the count, very famous phrase at the moment. And we're gonna share the results. And here we can see that a majority of people are confident and have selected option E. Decipher is to work something out. And where that word comes from, cipher is a code. And so to decipher, thinking about our prefix knowledge, is to reverse that cipher. So it's to break the code. Now, a lot of you did choose option D to simplify, and simplify is very close in meaning. And I put that in there intentionally, because to simplify is also to break something down. But I would say that simplify isn't quite as close in meaning as decipher. And I'd also say consider is quite close. You could consider a problem, and that would mean you're trying to work it out. But again, we're trying to be really specific with our vocabulary here, and decipher is the closest in meaning to working something out. But really well done to those of you that got that one correct. We'll stop sharing that. And now, with it being one minute past 11, we are going to get started. And so here today, we are looking at number logic. But before we launch into our learning, first of all, and this might be putting him in the spot because I haven't mentioned this yet, I'm going to introduce our co-trainer as I'm trying to do in every lesson. So answering the Q&A today, helping you with any questions you might have is, I believe, Clem, if you could turn on your camera and give us a wave. Here he is, fantastic. Wasn't surprised by that at all. And I'm glad I remembered it today because yesterday I forgot until the end of the lesson with Dom. So today in number logic, we are going to look at three topics. First of all, we're going to do a quick recap of number sequences because I know on Monday, when we looked at letter sequences and number sequences, there was a lot to get through. It was quite a quick lesson. It felt like we were moving through things quite fast. And I know that that sometimes makes it harder to learn things. So we're going to do a bit of a recap on number sequences. And I actually think doing so is going to help us as we look at number logic, which is thinking about statements of maths and how we can turn them into operations. And then we're going to move on to talking about equations and balancing. And so let's have a look. That hasn't updated. Bear with me one moment. I'm going to refresh my page because I changed that slide this morning. Here we go. This is looking more promising. Just going to present that again. That's a slide that's going to pop up a little bit later when we start talking about number sequences. Goodness, my computer being a little bit slow here as I refresh. But here we can still see the slide. So with number sequences, as we discussed on Monday, we will be given a series of numbers and we will need to identify the rule that is being followed to find the missing number. And we must remember to find, check, apply. Find the rule 
if you think you've got it, check by looking at some of the other numbers. And if you confirm that that is the rule, apply it to find the missing number. OK, it's just loading up. We're getting back to it. And here we go. Still seems to be displaying wrong. Very interesting. Well, we're going to skip ahead to the next slide here. Here we go. So this is a recap of the five different rules to, that the sequence could follow. So those of you that were here on Monday, can you tell me any of the types of sequences that we might see? Remember, there were four fantastic fish. Simple is one of them. Compound is another one that only applies to the mass sequences and not the letter, uh, letter sequences. Alternating, well done. Progressive and BC with the last one, odds and evens. And here we've got a recap of them. So with simple, we know that the numbers are increasing by the same amount each time. And we can see along the top there with this number sequence is plus two each time. The next one is alternating, and this is where it's going to be going up, then down, up, then down. It could also be times, then divide, times, then divide, although you don't see that very often. And we can see here that in this pattern, it's going minus one, plus three, minus one, plus three. Our next one, progressive, is where the pattern is increasing in the amount it changes. It could also decrease. So this one is plus one, plus two, plus three, plus four. We could also see minus one, minus two, minus three, minus four. And it could be the other way as well. It could be plus six, plus five, plus four, plus three, as long as the numbers of that change are progressing. Here we get to our trickier ones. Odds and evens is that one to look out for if you think I can't really spot a pattern here. Perhaps it's because it is skipping numbers. And in this one, we've got two patterns that are kind of interlaced with the green numbers going plus five each time and the blue numbers going multiplied by two each time. And finally, our uh, exclusive to number sequences rule is compound. And this is where two things are happening each time. And so in this particular example, we can see that the numbers are being multiplied by two and then subtracted by one times two minus one each time to create that sequence. So here are the five types of sequences that we could follow. And here we're going to put our knowledge to the test. So I'm going to relaunch that poll and we're going to give it a go. Fantastic. 50 votes come in and very confident with this one so far. Remember, when you're looking at a number sequence, try and think, how is the number changing each time? I would look at 38 and 31 and think, well, how can I change 38 into 31? It's getting smaller, so it's either going to be divide or subtract. And I don't think I could divide 38 to get 31. So I think it's going to be subtract. OK, so I can subtract seven to get from 38 to 31. Does that also work to get from 31 to 24, from 24 to 17? And look, I found the rule. I've checked it. Minus seven every time means this is a simple sequence. And as now 100 of you have chosen, let's share those results, the missing number is 10 we see a simple sequence of minus seven each time. Really good job, everyone. Starting off with an easier one to get those, uh, get those brains in gear. Slightly trickier one this time. Let's have another look. 
there's an error on that page. It still says choose two answers, which it should not. There is only one answer for this question and the poll only lets you to choose one answer as well. So just ignore that sentence. This one might take a little bit more time to work out. But again, using the same kind of approach, I'm gonna think about the first two numbers from four to 15, it is getting bigger. So it's not gonna be subtract or divide. And so how is it getting bigger? Well, it's getting bigger by nine, sorry, 11. So if I add 11 to 15, I get 26, but that's not 48. Okay, so it's not just going to be adding the same number each time. Could it be multiplying then? Four times, well, 15 isn't in the four times tables. So I couldn't multiply four by anything to get to that answer. Hmm. So here you need to think, could it be an odds and evens pattern? Could it be jumping different uh, to different numbers, or could we be looking at a compound sequence? Could it be multiplying and adding? Could it be multiplying and subtracting? So I'm gonna end the poll there. I know that this one has been a little bit tricky. So we've seen 54% of people cast a vote, but we're gonna take our time now to work this out. And here we've got this orange annotation as requested earlier. So we need to think about the way we can get from four to 15. And we've worked out that it can't just be addition because adding 11 each time doesn't work. It can't just be multiplication because you can't multiply four to get to 15. So I would first think, could this be a compound sequence? Could we be multiplying then doing something else? So I know my four times table, which I'm going to write down here, 4, 8, 12, 16. And I'm just gonna write it to there because 15 sits in between those two numbers. So I can now think, well, we could multiply four by three to get to 12, and then we could add something to it to get to 15. So that would be three. So at the moment, I think that one rule could be, and I'm going to write this down slightly differently, would be times three plus three. So we're taking a number, multiplying it by three, and then adding three to it. It could also be that it's multiplying by four and then taking away one, because we know that four times four is 16. And then to get from 16 to 15, we'd have to take away one. So this is my theory of a compound pattern. And I'm gonna test both those ideas to see if either of them work. So we know that four times three plus three is 15. If we then try and apply or check that for the second number, 15 times three is 45, plus three is 48. Interesting, so it seems to follow that pattern. But just to be extra careful, I'm gonna check the other pattern as well. If we were to do four times four is 16, take away one is 15, great. Okay, 15 times four is 60, take away one is 59. Okay, so that second pattern doesn't work. I might have found it, but I checked and it's wrong. So now I think I've got the answer. I'm going to use that to apply to get the answer. So we're gonna do 48 times three, and I'm gonna do my long multiplication here to work that out, just to be extra careful. Eight times three we know is 24. Four times three is 12, plus the two would be 144. And then we need to remember to add three to it, and 144 plus three, we have an answer here, 147. So 
Well done to all of you who chose option B. A bit of a trickier question there when we're looking at a compound sequence. And you've got to make sure to just slow it down, check a few different ideas until you're confident you have got the right answer. We've got one last number sequences question here. And again, I've made an error. I've not taken that choose two answers. Oh, this one does have two answers. That's, I think, where the error has occurred. I should have taken it out for the previous one. But here, the poll has been relaunched for two answers. Choose the two answers that fit. lots of answers coming through which is fantastic whenever i see a question like this the first thing that jumps out to me is that those first three numbers don't follow any kind of linear sequence 64 goes way down to 10 but then goes back up to 16. so that immediately tells me it can't be a simple sequence it can't be a progressive sequence so we've already ruled two out. It could still be alternating. We could be doing take away a number, add a number, take away a number, add a number. It could still be uh, odds and evens, and it could still be compound. I'm gonna give you maybe about 20 more seconds on this one, because it is a little bit tricky. Okay, we are going to stop there and I'm going to share the results because there's a bit of a mixed bag here. It seems to be that some people feel some answers can be chosen. And so I think it's very important here that we go through this together. So I'm just going to turn on my annotations and let's go for a, I, I saw someone asking for a cyan. Well, actually that might, no, that will work. So we can see here that, as I mentioned before, the numbers are going down and then back up uh, in the first three, 64, 10, 16. And this means that something is going on here. So one of the top tips to always keep in mind is if there isn't a clearly discernible pattern, we may be looking at odds and evens. But instead of jumping straight to that, I would first want to rule out um, the alternating pattern. So I can see here that from 64 to 10, we're going minus 54. Quite a big jump. And then we're going plus six to get from 10 to 16. And so because we've got those two steps, an alternating pattern is going to continue to follow those steps for the rest of the sequence, which means from 16, we're going to be going minus 54 again. And suddenly, that's going into a negative number. And we can look at the five options and see, well, there aren't any negative numbers there. So immediately we think we found the sequence and we've checked and it's not possible. So we've ruled out simple, we've ruled out progressive, we've ruled out alternating. We've now got the two trickier options left of compound and odds and evens. Typically, with compound patterns, you would still expect to see a kind of linear progression. The numbers should always be increasing or always be decreasing unless it's a very complex compound sequence. And you wouldn't typically see those. So I think it's a fair assumption that this will be an odds and evens pattern. So we're thinking about what's going to be happening between these numbers and what's going to be happening between these numbers. And I've just spotted that the final number at the end should actually be a one. 
So I'm going to edit that here. Oh, I don't want to highlight. I'm not doing a very good job there. Here we go, let's try that now. So I'm gonna change this to a one. And I appreciate that may be a little bit confusing if you weren't spotting a pattern previously. This is a one, not a zero. Back to our lovely blue, the first set of numbers, 64, 16, blank, one, we can see is following a particular pattern. To get from 64 to 16, because the number is getting smaller, we have two options. We can either subtract or we can divide. We could subtract 48. And if we were to continue subtracting 48, again, we'd go minus numbers below 16, and there are no minus numbers. So it's not gonna be subtraction. To get from 64 to 16 through division, we are dividing by four. Let's make that a little bit thicker. And so we can see that dividing by four works from 64 to 16, and now we need to check what's 16 divided by four. We know that to be four. And if we put that in there, we can check further by going four divided by four is one. We can see where I spotted that error in the number four divided by four is not zero. So we can see that the missing number there would be D. Now we need to look to the second set of numbers, the second, fourth, and sixth. And we can see we're going from 10 to something to 90. And so there are a few different ways we could do that. We can see that it seems like the number is increasing, and we can see that it increases by 80 across two numbers. So if it's increasing by 80 across two numbers, if that's using addition, then it's gonna be going up by 40 at a time. And so we could see, okay, so if this is going to be plus 40 each time, then we're gonna go from 10 to 50 to 90. But if we then look at the potential answers, there's no 50 there. So that can't be the answer. It could be the answer to a different sequence, but because it's not one of the options, we know it's not gonna be the right answer. And so we know that it's then not going to be addition. And if it's not addition, then it's going to be the other operation that increases numbers, multiplication. So we need to think 10 times what gets to a number that we can then follow that pattern also gets to 90. So if it was 10 times 10, that would be 100 times 10. Well, that would be 1,000. Okay, so that's much too big. So let's think of a smaller number. 10 times 5 is 50 times by 5 is 250. Okay, we still need to get smaller. 10 times 2 is 20 times by 2 again is 40. Okay, well, that's not right, but that's too small. All right, 10 times 3. 10 times 3 is 30. 30 times 3 is 90. So it looks like 30 will fit that pattern if times by 3 happens each time. And we can do that additional check. Is 30 available in the answers? Oh, look, it's there as option B. And so by breaking this down into its two separate sets of numbers and following that odds and evens pattern, we can find that the missing numbers are B, or the missing numbers are 30 and four for options B and D. Very well done if you got both of those correct. That is a tricky question. We're now going to think about number logic. I'm gonna take it a bit slow on this page just to give you an opportunity to think about those questions you've just done, kind of absorb that knowledge. In number logic, we are thinking about a statement which describes numbers mostly using words. And you then need to use your skills to translate those words into numbers. We need to be able to convert it into a sum or into an operation and use your logic and your reason, reasoning 
to be able to find the answer. We have an example here. If you add this number to 10 and divide by two, the answer is 15. And that might feel a little bit confusing when it's phrased like that. Most of the maths that you'll be looking at will be simple sums and formulas where you'll just see numbers and symbols and understand what it means. But it's going to be really important to be able to think about numbers and manipulate calculations in this way as well. Sometimes you don't always have the answer and you need to work backwards to be able to get it. And sometimes you might have seen these things as kind of your input output tables or your flow diagrams, but we also need to be able to do this with words. So we're going to break this down. If you add this number to 10 and divide by 2, the answer is 15. So first we need to restructure this as a simple equation. We know that the answer is 15. And if we then work backwards, we're dividing it by 2. And if we add that number to 10 before dividing it by 2, that will be the first part of it. And so we can see in that second step, we put a question mark for that missing number. Sometimes you might see letters, which would be known as variables or unknowns, where we don't know what that number is yet. But for this one, we're going to use a question mark. So we can see question mark plus 10 within brackets, because it needs to be done first, divided by two equals 15. So now we're going to be able to work through this using our order of operations, also known as bid mass, to do it step by step. But because we don't know what the question mark is, we can't do what's in the brackets. So we're going to have to work the other way. We're going to talk a little bit more about this when we're talking about equations and balancing later. But here we need to make sure that we are doing the same thing to both sides to be able to simplify things. So we've got that divided by two symbol and we want to get rid of that so that we can then work out what the question mark will be later. And to get rid of divided by two on one side, we need to do the opposite. And we know that the opposite of division is multiplication. So we're going to take that side and we're gonna multiply it by two. But whatever we do to one side of an equal sign, we must always do to the other side. We must keep them balanced. So we're going to multiply 15 by 2 as well, which we know is 30. And because of that, looking at the third, sorry, the fourth bullet point, we then know that this means question mark plus 10 is 30. And because that divided by 2 is gone, the brackets don't need to be there either. And so now we just have that question mark plus 10, and we're going to apply the same logic that we did before. We want to get rid of that 10 to leave question mark on its own, and we do the opposite. So we're subtracting 10 from that side. We also subtract 10 from 30, and that leaves us with question mark equals 20. So we know that the original number is 20. I hope that all makes sense. So it is question time and some of these are going to be a bit tricky and so I really want you to take your time to think about the correct answer. So for this one there is just one answer. Ooh, I don't want to share the results, I want to relaunch the poll. Here we go, so the poll is active but take your time, think about what this means. Think about in which order you need to be able to do this. Using your bid mass knowledge, your indices would come before your multiplication or your subtraction. You first need to be able to identify what three squared is before you can then work out the other answers. Perfect, right, we hit that 100 votes mark, which I'm becoming 
marginally obsessed with. Here are the results and we can see that 67%, two thirds of us have selected option E. And you are absolutely correct. But the reason that it is this answer, we're just gonna work through together. So we know that the number is four less. And so we can imagine that as being minus four. Four less than three squared, which we would write like this. But we know that three squared or three times three is nine. So we can simplify that to nine straight away. And then multiply by four, you know, it's times four. So we've got four less than nine times four. And so we're going to do the nine times four first to work out what that number is. And we know that nine times four is 36. And then we're going to subtract four from that to get 32. Well done if you were able to work that out. If you're finding this a little bit tricky, that's okay. You've got to work hard to build understanding through these lessons. And then the adaptive activity that you can work on afterwards will really help to push you in building that knowledge further. Right, let's carry on. Our next question, still just a single answer question. I'm gonna relaunch the poll and give you an opportunity to work this one out. A little bit trickier, this one. to think about the way that this is phrased. When this number is subtracted from the result of 11 multiplied by five, the sum is 38, or the answer is 38. I'm gonna give you a little bit more time to think this one over. Might even start annotating some of these parts. So when this number is subtracted, so we don't know what the number is, but that's gonna be minus question mark. So when this number is subtracted from the result of 11 multiplied by five, so 11 multiplied by five, we know that to be 55. So when this number is subtracted from 55, the answer is 38. So 55 take away question mark equals 38. I'm going to end the poll there. Hit that 100 vote mark again. Woo! And share the results. So a little bit tricky the way that that is worded. But if you were to have a sum that was just 55 take away something is 38, I think you'd be able to do that pretty quickly. You can find the difference between two numbers by just subtracting the smaller number from the larger number. And in doing so, you would find that the answer is 17. So well done to 74 of you that selected that answer. If you found that one a little bit tricky, remember to keep on practicing. That's why we're here today, to build on our learning. Okay, this is the final question of our number logic. And this is much harder. Actually, maybe not much harder. I think some of you might find this fairly similar, but there are two answers for this question. Remember to consider each element individually. 
So we can see when these two numbers are multiplied together. So we're looking for, oh, goodness me, I should have turned annotations on. Let's hope you didn't see that. Let's use a nice green. And these two numbers are multiplied together. So we're looking for two numbers. When they're multiplied together, they equal 19 less. So we know that that's going to be minus 19. 19 less than half of 164. So we know that would be 164 divided by 2. So 164 divided by 2, we would know to be 82. You might need to work that one out on paper, and that's OK. So we then need to do 19 less than 82. 82 minus 19 is 63. And so now you're looking for two numbers that multiply together to make 63. And we can see here that the vast majority, 84% and 86% have selected the correct answers because using our times tables knowledge, we know that nine times seven makes 63. For some reason, it won't let me turn off the annotations. Here we go. Nine times seven equals 63. Really well done, everybody. The last part of today's lesson, and this isn't going to take too much time, because actually this is still building upon knowledge that we've already demonstrated there. This is just a bit more of a discussion about equations and balancing. And this is to make it really clear how important it is to always do the same thing to both sides. Whenever you see an equal symbol, and we can see one here in the middle of these scales, a blue equal symbol, you can assume that both sides of the equation are balanced. We know that five is the same as 10 divided by two. We know that 16 is the same as four times four. And these can get increasingly more complicated. So in this example here, we know that four squared, well, four times four is 16, plus nine is 25. So that side equals 25, the same as the number 25. The balancing of an equation must always remain true. So if you wanted to add three to one side, you'd need to add three to the other. If you wanted to divide one side by two, you need to divide the other side by two. Otherwise, that equal symbol would no longer be accurate. Think of it as scales. If you're adding weight to one side, it's going to be imbalanced and the, uh, the equal sign is no longer valid. We need everything to be perfectly balanced. You might have seen that before. So we're just going to wrap up with some last questions. And this is, again, going to test your ability to break down worded questions or to use that number logic skill that we've been using. But I appreciate that you're going to need to wrap your head around this in a slightly different way. If we are trying to balance this equation to simplify it, to find the value of A, what will we need to do to both sides? So let me change this to single answer and relaunch the poll. So what do we need to do to be able to get A on its own? And this is something that you definitely want to think carefully about, because when I was writing these questions, I even started to confuse myself. I had to just stop, think carefully about what it all means. Okay, lots of votes starting to come in, which is great. Taking a bit of time to think about it. I'm just going to have a few more seconds. Get your answers in if you can. Remember, if you're not feeling confident about this, it's sometimes good just to try to reason, to give it a go, even if you ultimately get it wrong. 
because you've tried, you've done your best, and then you can still learn from it. Well, I'm going to end the poll there. 50% have selected the answer E, and you're absolutely right that what we would need to do to be able to get A on its own, to be able to work out the value of A, is we need to get rid of the eight. And to get rid of something in an equation, we need to do the opposite. So because there is a plus eight, we need to do a subtract eight to cancel those out. But remembering back to that balancing, if we're subtracting eight from the right-hand side, we also need to subtract eight from the left-hand side. And this would ultimately mean that we would know that A is nine. And this makes sense when you actually think about it. Nine plus eight equals 17. Okay, and a slightly trickier one here, but let's just give it a go. If you're finding it tricky, that's okay. Everyone finds things hard at first. Practice makes perfect. actually seeming a little bit more confident with this one. I think maybe a bit of practice from that first question and a bit of building of understanding is helping you to be able to work this out a bit more clearly. Okay, we're gonna end the poll there. So with this kind of a question, because there are multiple things happening to the unknown, which in this one is why, we need to make sure to simplify it step by step. Um, we're not going to be able to get rid of the four of four y until we've already gotten rid of the two. Because if we were to divide all of that by two, we'd end up with y plus 0 0.5. And that would be a little bit confusing. We try to avoid decimals within these kinds of questions whenever we can. So instead, first of all, we want to get rid of the two. And just as we've agreed, you need to do the opposite to get rid of something. So because this is plus two, we need to do minus two or subtract two first. But if we're doing it to one side, we're going to do it to the other side as well. So I'm gonna turn on my annotation for I think the last time today, and I'm gonna use a red. So if we're getting rid of the plus two by putting a minus two here, we also need to put a minus two here. And that means that on this side, this all gets canceled out. And 30 minus two, I'm going to simplify to 28. So now we are left, I appreciate this is a little bit messy, but now we're left with 28 equals four Y. I can see someone has a question there as what does four Y mean? And this is something that you're slowly gonna start seeing at school. Uh, at school. This is algebra. And 4y means four lots of the unknown value. So if y was two, 4y would be eight. And you might expect to see a times sign in between there, four times y. But when we're working with algebra, we don't need the time sign there. 4y means four lots of y. Great question though. Really important to challenge those things and make sure you're learning about anything you're not sure about. So we've simplified this to be 28 equals 4y, but we need to know what y is. We need to know the value of the unknown that is y. And so we need to take that four lots of y and turn it into just one. And so just as I mentioned, I'm gonna scribble this out. I'm gonna write it like y times four. And just as we've looked at earlier, whenever you want to get rid of part of an equation or simplify that equation, you need to do the opposite. We know that the opposite of times four is divided by four. 
But if we're dividing the right hand side by four, we must also divide the left hand side by four. And 28 divided by four, we can use our times tables knowledge to know that that would be seven. And so once again, I can scribble this out, very messy. I hope that when you're writing in your maths books, it's much clearer than that. But we can now know with all of this canceling out as well, and I'm just gonna clear all of this and rewrite it. But we would know that y equals four. And the process we have followed to do that is first we subtracted two to get rid of the plus two, then we divided by four to get y on its own. And what that means is that as 50 of you selected, the correct way to simplify this equation is option C. Now, this is something that you will start building as a skill as you are getting older, as you are working through algebra more. And certainly in secondary school, you'll be doing lots of this. You'll become really, really confident with manipulating equations in algebra. But it's never too early to start looking at things like this. But that is where we're going to pretty much call it a day. And timing is pretty much bang on. Today, we have covered number sequences for the second time in one week. And I hope that that recap was able to build that knowledge a bit more effectively. We've looked at number logic, the ability to take worded problems and manipulate them into operations. And we've looked at equations, how to keep them balanced and how to kind of reverse engineer them to get those question marks or those unknowns on their own in the simplest form. I know that once again, that's quite a lot of knowledge to have taken on, but these are really important skills. And I'm really impressed with how hard you've all worked today. Last things that I would love to see you do, log into Atom Nucleus. It's really good to be able to complete that adaptive act um, activity to lock in that knowledge from today's lesson. There's also great stuff on there like help sheets and videos if you're feeling uncertain. And there's also links to Galore Park book it will even give you the page number. Atom Learning is partnered with Galore Park and they have fantastic book resources to help with learning. Sometimes it's good to spend some time away from your screen. And if you have those books and work through them, they link really well with the work that we provide as well. You can complete a quick questionnaire. I'd love to know one thing I've done really well today and one thing you think I can do better next time. But otherwise, thank you so much for joining today. Well done for all of your hard work. And from me, bye-bye.